So what starts to happen is there the funny story goes, oh, I did my tax with Corey. Really? Yeah, he's at my address. No, isn't that where Albert is? And then they realize that I'm one in the same because some people call me Corey, my last name. Some people call me Albert and I never, you know, I never, whatchamacallit, correct them. I get it. You're just a chip off the old album. Thank you. Thank Let's you. rock and roll. Hey guys, um, welcome to what Rock Your Bottom podcast. Um, Success Academy, you know, wherever Woo-hoo! we're at today. Um, today, I got the world famous Greg Reed. He's an Amazon six time, seven time bestseller, New York Times. Guys, I met him, we just met recently, and what a cool guy. Uh, he's really cool. He's even got a star um, in front of um, Paris Hotel, dude, in Vegas. How cool is that? He's the leader for how many years of Secret Knox now? Yeah, about 15. And just for clarity, I haven't done a New York Times yet, but I've been publishing 118 books, 45 different languages, and I think 38 bestsellers now. It's kind of wild. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. The one and only Greg Reed. Yay! And then the crowd's going wild. Um, Let's just give a little. Let me tell you a funny story. I'm um, part of in my book connection um, is one of the way in perceptions. Those are my two books. And guess what? One of the things is connections are the simple way to grow. Um, we met at literally two events. Um, one event like in 2008 in San Diego at Manny's event. And then we reconnected. The point is, everybody, you got to go out. You want to be successful. You got to go out see people get out of your house even in their, even when you're in covid you know you should have been instead of watching netflix you should have been in all the um zoom rooms and everybody's room to meet cool people like mr greg so mr greg tell us how you are and what you did for the people who don't know you yeah and it, i agree with you i call it pop power proximity you right. know putting ourselves in uh, this you know circumference of people that are achieving the goals we want so for example look when i went to be a best-selling author funny story i went to barnes and noble and bought every best-selling book and then i called those authors up and said teach me the system right because if you surround yourself with people are doing uh-huh. what you want then ultimately you can do it yourself for example if i needed guidance for tax you know counseling or for wealth management uh-huh. i'd sit down with you and say hey show me some of the tricks because you've already paid what I call the dummy tax from all your trials and tribulations. <laughs> Lots of dummy tax, Greg. Yeah, I can, I can learn from your experience. Right. Right. I mean, the role to success is doing the connection to just other people who have gone before you. I think that's always been the key. Um, so what are some of the other keys you want to, like, tell the world? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, we, you and I were talking to... Bill Walsh's event, uh, Rainmaker, and was really interesting. We're, we're going over the power of CPC, and it's an acronym that stands for Clues, Patterns, Choices. It's about accountability and responsibility for every single thing that happens. It's our fault. We have to stop blaming other people. So if you see someone with a bad reputation in business and they cheat your best friend and then you do business, well, uh. you saw the clue, you saw the pattern, you made the choice. It's like seeing a rattlesnake rattle by your kid's sister you go to pet it, get bit, and you're mad at the snake. Looking back, we won't be mad at the relationships that failed or negotiations that fell through. We're just mad that we stayed in too long because we saw the clues, we followed the patterns, but we made our choices late. Oh, very cool. And that is so true. I think another thing you didn't add to that, what I could tell you, is you never made any, there is no bad decisions as long as you learn. Because let me tell you the, my really dirty secret you know, when I started doing email marketing, um, this guy really clean. And there's been a bunch of people who clean my MX card a lot and they never got crap. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to go and say thank you. Every one of those people who they thought they stole money from. Because guess what, Greg? If they didn't steal money, wouldn't be talking today. Because I would figure out, well, shit, sorry. Beep. Guys, this is a real podcast. So I talk, well, this is real. And then I would go, wait a minute. What did I do wrong? And I'd go do something else and something else and something else. Well, guess what, Greg? The the six times something else is how we met. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Success leaves clues. Right. Uh, you know, even our setbacks, they teach us stuff as we go. The main thing is, look, I, I never look 
back for some reason. I'm kind of one of those weird birds. People want to always talk like, you know, looking back, what's the biggest mistakes you made? Yeah, it's not a good conversation for me. I like to say, looking forward, what's some of the great things I've learned that I'm going to, you know, start applying for my future success? Because that's the conversation I want to have. And a quarterback in football, they never throw a ball where the wide receiver is standing. They throw it downfield and let you run to it. So for myself, I feel like I'm just chucking hell Mary because all you need is one you know, amazing play. And that's the one that they're going to tell the stories and write the books about. <clears throat> Very cool. Um, how did you get into, obviously, how did you get in, into this type of world of the secret and, and all the cool stuff? I mean, some of the books, um, I know I've read, I think my favorite one when I was coming, when I first met you um, from in San Diego was that three feet of gold. That to me, by the way, for everybody's watching this, Greg's style of books, okay, Three Feet of Gold, and what's your, the new one you just came out, The Salesman, something about Salesman, it's the yes. blue cover. It's sellership. It's about not focusing just on how to sell right. people, but how to make sales leaders, sales trainers. And Brian Tracy, one of my all-time heroes, wrote the forward for it. So Ben Ward and I were very blessed and honored for him to come on board. And what we do is we write in something called the parable form. It's a storyline. And you and right, I are right, right, yeah. yeah, you and I are working on a new parable called Station 42 right. that'll be out later on this year. And it's gonna be spectacular. But so what I was saying about Greg is I love your way. Because listen, there's the other guy who's like the giant, giant, AK hit, hit. Listen, I'm not denying his style, but in your, for people who don't understand what he just said, I'm going to speak to you in my language is he teaches you because he tells you a story that somebody on main street can understand. His books have so much value, but it's like, so boom, boom, boom. And you pick them up that even me, um, can always pick them up because you write it in, in Main Street language. You write it in, in, in real people's words, you know what I'm trying to get at, that we can relate to all your stories. And I like how you call it parable storytelling. How did you come up with that? That's pretty cool. Well, because I'm not that smart. And I think that people remember a story and they'll remember how they felt more than the person talking at them. It seems like today's... Uh, Society, there's all these gurus on soapboxes saying you should do this and you should do this and no one wants to be shit on right and so what i like to do is focus on you know telling a story where there's a message that's built inside so later on you'll remember that message even though you might not remember the person who gave it to you i don't mind who gets the credit so three years from now you might have that aha in the shower right. because that epiphany hits you at that moment and that's what i like to focus on <clears throat> sorry very cool um, I'm going to go out to your event, and I know your signature event is Secret Knock. Um, tell us about what that's about. Well, first of all, it's a secret, so I'm not going to tell you too much, but I will tell you this. We are Forbes, Inc., Entrepreneurs' Top Business Event for you know entrepreneurs and people that really want to connect and collaborate. And the concept is instead of coaches, teachers, mentors, we just bring in the world authority. So if you want to start a new clothing line, well, Go over to the taco bar. You can hang out with Brian Smith, who founded Ugg Boots. If you got an idea for a board game, here's Rob Angel, who created Pictionary, you know, millions of copies. And where would our lives be by actually hanging out with the individuals who have accomplished what everyone else is just talking about? And that's what Secret Knock is built upon in our foundation. So does that mean about three years? Guys, if you want to know the ninja tricks, how to grow your business, um, who are you going to call? Hint, hint, hint. All right. mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. When we started doing this event, we, we kind of did a George Costanza opposite day, if you ever watched Seinfeld, right. where everyone else would have these, you know, big old placards with a little round picture with the speaker's face in there and talk about what they're going to learn. We did the opposite. So our thing is it costs a lot of money to go, as you know, right. and we will not tell you where it is or who will be there. You won't. Very know. cool. You know, no. you know nothing, right? And the whole idea is that we slowly drip the information to the people who are coming, but we don't let the general population know. That way we don't have looky loos and people just popping in. And by doing that, last time we had President Vicente Fox join in Ooh, without- Ooh, he's very cool. Yeah, we had a private Skype with Edward Snowden while he's hiding in Russia. We Wowzies. In, yeah, we flew in Tonino Lamborghini from Italy with all these amazing humans. So the idea is we keep it private, we keep it exclusive and give you direct access. Very cool. 
Um, how did you get start? I mean, obviously this, this didn't start by, how did you get started in this world? Oh, and by accident. Kind of yeah, I mean, I, it was all, you know how it is, our side hustles or our hobbies become sometimes our full-time gigs. So what happened is that I was writing best-selling books and people kept saying, how do I meet your friends that you're, you know, coming across while you're, you're, you're publishing? And so I started an event in my living room with 12 people it blew up and then they started telling people and telling people and eventually they said do we need a ticket and i says nope all you know is the knock bump and a bump bump as a joke and it went on to become a global juggernaut who would ever thought i love that i love that <clears throat> um what would you say because this is kind of a business slash success mm -hmm. in, in the in the world coming out of COVID, who are like ooh, ooh, what would you say the one thing that peeps got to do to elevate and rock and roll going forward. Yeah, I, I, I don't know any of those people that are like that. I mean, I'm in San Diego and it, today's the first day of summer, the everywhere is packed, the economy's flourishing, every restaurant's packed. People are, people are ready to get rock and rolling right now. And so I believe that a tsunami of success is coming our direction. And I believe that we have got to prepare ourselves for the opportunities that are coming our way. So I have something called RAS, which is a scientific version of the law of attraction. It means reticular activator system. Whatever you look for, you will see. If you look for red cars, you'll see red cars. Well, right now I'm looking for opportunity, relationships, collaborations, because those two are around me and I'm tuning in so I can you know, tap into the source and bring them to our sphere of influence. Oh, very cool. Um, I always respect everybody's time. So what's a couple of things as parting shots you want people to know about you and how can they get a hold of you? Well, less about me. Here's a good nugget. Surround ourselves with people, again, that are getting the results we want for ourselves. And door number two, seek counsel and not opinion. The guy who invented uh, super strength theory taught me this. He said, successful people seek counsel and failures listen to opinion. And so what's the difference? He said, opinions based on ignorance, lack of knowledge, inexperience, like all your family friends who've never done what you're about to venture upon. Counsels based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship, people pave the way. If I go to a family friend and tell them I'm going to write a best-selling book, they tried to talk me out of it to protect me because I'm dyslexic and got a D in English and they never read a best-selling book. So I went to Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen and wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, sold a billion copies. And they said, Greg, sit down. Here's what you need to know and gave me counsel based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship. If we would spend our activity only seeking counsel and ignoring people's opinion, that's the day your life would change. And through this monumental time that we have in history, it is a time to start seeking the people that are getting the results we want so we can do it too. Oh, very cool. Um, one day I'll tell you, <clears throat> about that that kind of happened to me um i wrote an amazon bestseller and i kind of tell my wife because they think i'm crazy or my brother and and sure enough now my my wife's oh look at my son oh, i don't i don't have any with me because i'm in my office um they go to me oh look he wrote a book and even to this day my brother you know he's a lawyer oh you know they make fun and I say, well, are you on Amazon, Joe? When you're on, even though you're the best lawyer out there, um, but when you're on Amazon, then we talk. But if you're not on Amazon, stick to what you, like you just said, and then we talk. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else, anything else you want to say? Give us yeah. some cool nuggets. Well, here's one of my favorites. And we talked about this again when we met both times, Manny and at Bill Walsh's event. Right. And it was one of my favorite interviews I ever did. And it was with Evander Holyfield, the boxing legend. And I said, how did you win so many heavyweight championships? And he said, I just have a higher standard, just like you, Al. And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, in sports, I showed up early. I left late. Right. I did what I had to do. And I had a higher standard. I won more championships. I said, didn't it hurt being in a fight? He says, yeah, but when you're in a fight, you don't focus on the pain. You don't focus on the blows. Mm -hmm. As soon as you focus on the pain, you end up on your back knocked out. Yep. But that's what people do outside the ring. They focus on gas prices, war, economy, and then they wonder why they never become a champion. They pull me in tight. An Adonis of a man missing half an ear bitten off by Mike Tyson. He says, the funny thing is, when you do win the championship, everyone comes to their feet and they chant your name. They raise your hand in victory and they put a big shiny belt around your waist. 
He said at that moment and at that second, you don't feel even one of the punches you took along the journey. But the guy in the losing locker room will have every bruise, every excuse for the rest of their life, wishing they had a higher standard. No, and you know, and that's the truth. And it goes back, by the way, what you said earlier. And and part of, of, of getting the standards is start hanging around with people that are going to take you there. And, you know, and like I was helping some like a friend of mine and I said, look, all right, well, I don't have any money. Well, watch YouTube. There's a zillion until you have the money. There's all kinds of YouTube or spend uh, like 12 bucks and, and buy the audio or buy the book on Amazon. And heaven forbid you go out and read it. What a concept. Yeah, many receive great advice. Not everyone capitalizes. On oh, I agree. Yeah, and a lot of times we listen to something called stinking thinking. Well, remember, you know, we do have 64,000 thoughts a day. And unfortunately, most of them are ants, automatic negative thought. They're the reptilian part of your brain to protect you. But it's the actions we take on the thoughts that create our circumstance. So when people come up to me and says, you know, I wish I had a Lamborghini. I said, no, you don't. Yeah. And they said, what do you mean? I go, well, if you wish you had one, you'd have one. The fact of the matter, you don't have one just proves you don't want it bad enough because you're not willing to take the necessary actions. I can <laughs> learn every single thing I need to know about someone by exactly where they're at and the actions and what they're taking. And you know, that's so true. Does that mean that coffee that I got, you know, <clears throat> you said something that I'm going to tell the story. You mind if I tell the story how, how I, and, and, and what the story I'm going to tell you is so true that it's about taking action. Remember, I asked you, and I'm going to tell you your exact quote. I said, remember the night before I said, um, because I'm Lebanese and I always, the way the Lebanese people charm their way in is you help somebody. So part of my help in charming you was, I said, okay. Um, I, 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 I can do this one. The night before you said, hey, what kind of coffee do you like? And I went, what in the world, why would you ask that question? And I just told you arbitrarily. And the next day when I showed up, you had a coffee waiting for me the exact way that I wanted right, to. Right. Not only grab the attention, but I was going like, why would this millionaire guy be bringing me coffee? <clears throat> well, I'll give you my secret, super secret sauce on that. See, we come from North Lebanon, where my, the crew comes from. And, and you go out and help people. You know, and, and, and you, don't, you go out and make people laugh and make people feel good. And since we started... I didn't know you. I figured that was my, we're going to call it my, um, Greg, my little secret door in, you know, and, and the funny thing I'll always tell the story on stage is, and you said that nobody ever did that for him saying, look, huh? It's the easiest thing to do to get into somebody's heart is go buy him coffee or go get him a tea or a bag of chips or something. Or if you don't have any money, stay and help out a little bit, you know, move a couple of chairs for him. And that's how I built my business, doing that. You know what it cost me, Greg? Like, like next to nothing, but it works. Yeah, it's the action right. of the law of attraction that makes right. our dreams a reality. You got to think it, feel it, get off our backside, take action and do it. All right, any last parting words no. of wisdom I can uh, give you? Whatever you want, do this to see. When I run my show, Mr. Greg, it's your show. Because I want you to spread love and joy to my audience. Awesome. Well, right now it is the first day of summer and my son is off of school. It's his first week off and I promised to take him to the beach and go throw some Frisbees around. So I'm going to go do that. So I will end with uh, one of my little aha epiphanies, one of my favorite stories. I got a chance to go face to face, knees to knees with a guy named Steve Wozniak. Wow. Now, a lot of people know Apple computers, but Woz was the guy who actually created a lot of the right. things behind the scenes. And I asked him, I said, how did you and Jobs create so much success? And he says, we embraced our lack. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, we embraced what we didn't have. We didn't run from it. We ran toward it. I said, give me an example. He said, when these little microchip processor things came out, they were so expensive, we could only afford one chip. He goes, job sold his car. I sold my calculator. We pulled our money to buy one of them. He goes, but Hewlett Packard and IBM would make machines that go from point A to point B with 20 chips. They had all the money of God. He said, I'd pull away five, get it to work with 15. I pull away five, get it to work with 10. Eventually, we went from A to B using our one chip. He goes, we were not trying to be innovative or cool or aerodynamic or slick. We could afford one chip. <laughs> but by embracing that as an opportunity, we found the shortest, cleanest path. 
And by doing that, we change the way people do personal computing for the rest of the world, for the rest of their life. The moral is, where could we be right now if we stop looking at something as our greatest challenge and obstacle, but it could just be your greatest blessing and opportunity in disguise. And until I see you again, young man, I want to thank say thank you, guys. You We're out. Go have fun with the Frisbee and don't get burnt. Guys, <laughs> thank you. Here, let me get your offs. I know you got to go. Here, you just go off. It doesn't matter. All right. I'll see you later, Albert. Yeah. Guys, thank you for um, joining our show today. Um, Optimal Success Academy and um, Rock Your Bottom Podcast. We just had Greg Reed. Um, if you're watching this, sharing is caring, as always. Um, we always got some free gifts. All you do is you got to text taxman to 26786. That's taxman to 26786. You'll get my 101 ways to grow your business with less capital and resources, plus a whole bunch of other bonuses, probably valued about $99. So just text taxman to 26786. Or if you don't know how to text, go to freegiftsalbert.com. Like I always say, sharing is caring. And you can find us on all platforms by just going to albertc360.biz. That's albertc360.biz. If you're watching us on Facebook, sharing is caring. And we'll talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>